Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode with Dr. B the Chemi. So in one of my previous videos, we talked about things you should do to make a visually appealing figure, especially when you get the default settings of Excel. So in today's video, we're actually gonna talk about and go over how to make those features appear in your Excel figure so that you have a good looking figure. And so for us today, we're gonna to be converting a figure that looks like this into a figure that looks like this, all in Excel. So let's head on over to Excel and we'll get started. And now welcome to Excel. So today I've got in our spreadsheet, I've got a few pieces of data that we are going to plot. So in column C, I've got some times going from zero to five, going up in increments of one, and they're in hours. And then in column D, I've got some masses going from zero to 10 over those five hours. And we're gonna be going up in increments of two. And so essentially we're just producing something at a rate of two kilograms per hour. And we wanna plot this data. And before we go into any of the figure formatting and how do we make this figure and beautify it in Excel, I just wanna give this disclaimer that I am working with Excel 2016. So things may look a little different if you're operating, because I also operate in a Windows, if you're operating in a Mac, or if you're using a different, different version of Excel, that could be 2013 or older, or it could be 2019. But for the most part, everything I'm doing here should be the same as what you are doing on your computer. So we're going to insert a figure. Go to insert, and you see over here, there's a scatter plot. We're gonna click it, and what do you know? There's nothing that's been included yet. So for us, what we'll do is we're gonna right click and there's an option for select data. And we're gonna add. And so we're gonna, for series X values, we're gonna go to time. We're gonna select the cells that are time going from zero to five. And then for the Y values, we're gonna de delete that equals one. And we're going to insert all these masses. And we're gonna click okay. If you have multiple series, then you may include series names, and that'll be very convenient for when you wanna include a legend. For us, since it's only one set of data, I'm not gonna include the series name. So we click okay, and we now have our series. And as you might recognize, the formatting is very similar to what I discussed in my previous video on making a good looking figure for what Excel naturally makes for a figure, which is not exactly what we wanna include. So for us, we're gonna clean this up a bit. So the first thing we'll do is we're gonna get rid of the chart title. We just click on chart title and delete. We can then add in axis titles. And there's two ways you can go about it. You can either go when, you're, when you have the figure selected, you can click the plus sign in the corner and then go to axis titles and then I'll add the axis titles. If that is not available to you, the alternative option is you can go over here in your developer tab and there's a chart design option. And there's also add chart element and again, you can do access titles. And this one gives you a little bit more selectivity. So in this case, this is gonna allow you to include the, the horizontal as well as the vertical separately. So now that we've got our access titles, let's modify those, let's correct those for what they should be representing. So on the Y axis, we have our mass in kilograms and the X axis, we have our time, which is hours. And as a reminder, that the default setting of Excel includes gray text for all of the pieces. So for us, I also wanna modify that. So we're gonna click on our mass. We're gonna just go over to the color. We're gonna make it a black text. Same for the axis numbers. We're gonna make those black. Same for the X axis, both with the title and the numbers. So all the, all the numbering is black now. Great. Okay, next thing we wanna do, we wanna modify our axis our axes and we want to we want to make them thicker we want to make them black so the way we can go about that is we can right click on our axis and there is format axis and under axis options what we're going to do is we're going to go to the paint bucket and we're going to go to line we're going to go to solid line and i'm now going to modify this i'm going to make it a black a black line and we're going to modify the width and we're gonna increase it, let's go, let's say to two point, uh, two point thickness. With your axis, with your axes, 
The thickness will depend on if you're going to be including this in a Word document or if you're including this in a PowerPoint. Depending on which, pla which piece you're going to be inserting it in, that will affect what thickness you need to make it. Because when you project something on PowerPoint, you need to make things a bit bigger in order for everyone to see them compared to a Word document where things are gonna be in a little bit more of a confined space and things are gonna be scaled down. Just something to be aware of. Uh, and so all the numbers that I'm working with are not necessarily the exact numbers you should be working with for a Word document as well as for PowerPoint. You'll have to play around with that and use your, your judgment in identifying what is an appropriate axis width. But for now, we're gonna go with we're gonna go with some settings that I think look a bit better than what we've been what we have now. So again on the x-axis, we're gonna format this. We're going to increase the thickness again to two point font, two point thickness. Okay. The next thing we want to do is get rid of the grid lines. And so in this case, we can just click on the grid, the horizontal grid lines, delete them, click on the vertical grid lines, and delete them. If there is a situation where you do need the grid lines to be added back in because you do need your audience to be reading what your Y values are, you can go back to the chart design tab over here on the top in your developer tab. You're gonna to go to add chart element and there's grid lines. And again, this will allow you to add in specifically the horizontal or the vertical grid lines. For us, I'm not gonna include those. I just wanna show you where you can go to obtain them if you need to add them back in. So we've now modified a lot of our figure. The next thing we need to do is work on the markers. Because as I mentioned before, your markers, normally you want them to be hollow, especially if it's only one or two sets of data, so that if you have any data that's overlapping, it's easy to see that you have marker, you have data on top of each other. So for us, what we're gonna do is we're gonna format these markers. We're going to format data series by right clicking on the on the data. So I'm gonna do that one more time. So we right click on the data points. We're going to format data series. And now we go to the paint bucket and we're gonna go to click marker. We go to marker options. And for us, we're gonna to go to built in. And for the marker, we can leave it with a circle. If it's only one series, circles are fine. If you have multiple series, then you'll wanna use different types of markers. And I'll talk about that in a separate video, why, why to do that. Uh, and for us, we're gonna increase the size. We're gonna to go to, let's say seven. We're gonna, we'll, go with, we'll go with a seven. And the reason for that is because I'm currently zoomed in at 180% so that you can see my figure and see what I'm doing. Okay, so now we've got our marker. It's a bit larger. The next thing we need to do is we need to modify the coloring of it and the fill. So for us, we're gonna to go to fill, we're gonna to go to no fill, and we're gonna to go to border. We're gonna make it a solid line and we're gonna make it black, which it currently is. And we're gonna increase our width just a little bit so that again, our, our markers pop out. And again, as I said before, the settings I'm, I'm using right now are not necessarily exactly what you want for a Word document or a PowerPoint. You'll have to use your dis discretion to identify what are appropriate sizes for Word and PowerPoint. So now that we've got our markers all set up, the last thing that we can do is we can add a trend line in if, if we know that it is supposed to be a, a linear representation. And so for us to do that, we can right click and we can well, right click on the data and we can add a trend line. And since we know it's supposed to be linear, we can include it. And if you want to make the trend line a different color, you want to make it instead of the blue, we want to make it black. We can go to the paint bucket again. You can go to solid line and make it black. If you want to change the, the style, you can go to dash type. You can make it a solid line if you like, or you can make it a alternating dash style, whatever you prefer. I'm going to go with, for us, I'm going to go with the regular dotted, uh, dotted line. And lastly, you, if you want, you can also, for your line, you can include a R squared value and you can display the equation on the chart. And that, that can be helpful to your audience if they need to know what the equation is supposed to be. Also, to know how well of a fit you've gotten with your figure. And again, because you're legend, 
because Excel defaults with gray for text coloring, we want to make sure that we turn that into black by going over and selecting the black color for text. And now that you've made this figure, what you can do instead of, let's say, having to make this figure every single time that you're making a figure, you, may, you can now save this figure as a template so that you don't have to do this every time you go into Excel. But before we save that, before we save our template, I just realized we actually are missing one thing in our figure, tick marks. So what we're gonna do in order to add those tick marks is we're gonna click on our axis. And if your format axis tab doesn't open up immediately, what we're going to do is we're going to right click, go down to format axis so that this tab opens up. And then from there, we're gonna select tick marks. We're going to go to the major type. We're gonna go for outside to have our tick marks. And we're gonna do the same thing for our Y axis. Again, we'll go to our tick marks under the format, format axis tab. We're going to select the outside. And now we have finished making our beautiful figure and now we can save it as a template where we're going to select our figure. We're gonna make sure that the entire area is selected. We're gonna right click, save as template. And now for this, we're gonna save it as, let's say a, a good looking figure. And let's save that. And now we have that template available to us to use in the future. So now if I wanna insert a new set of data, let's highlight this and let's insert a new figure. Let's go to a scatter. So we have our scatter plot once again, and we see that we got the default settings of Excel. But now what I can do is I can change my figure to be something different, to be something to be the, the exact same that we just made. And for this, what we'll do is we're gonna select the, the whole area, we'll right click, and you're now going to change chart type. And for this, we're going to go to templates and we're going to select good looking figure. And we're gonna click okay. And now we have the same exact figure that we had before. The only difference is that we now need to update the title, the axis titles to be mass in kilograms and time in hours. Unfortunately, when you use your default or when you use your template, the template doesn't know what to label the axes. So you will have to update that every time you include your format, your properly formatted uh, figure. But now we have our, our nicely formatted figure. We have a template so we can pull from that every time we want to make new figures. And now you're good to go. So thanks a lot for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.